Welcome back. So in the last lecture, we derived this simplest first order linear differential equation for things like the population growth of a population of bunnies or how much your loan grows if you have compound interest, uh, radioactive decay of a, a radioactive element or isotope, or the thermal runaway in a little you know, piece of electronics. So x dot equals ax, this means the derivative of x with respect to time is linearly proportional to x with a proportionality constant a. a is just a number. And we wrote down that the solution of this is uh, x at time t is e to the a t times my initial condition, which I'm going to say is x at time zero, x naught. So sometimes we use shorthand uh, x subscript zero means my initial condition x at time zero. Okay, so we derived this last time. And so this time what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to solve this differential equation using a power series or a Taylor series expansion for x of t. And we're actually going to derive this exponential function from scratch. This is a very powerful method uh, in ordinary differential equations. You can actually use this approach to solve much, much nastier differential equations, things like um, where you would get the solution being Bessel's functions or Aries functions, uh, differential equations that are nonlinear, you can solve using the technique I'm about to show you. Okay? So, um, again, we asked ourselves this question uh, kind of what is, what is this e to the a t? And so I'm going to kind of derive it from scratch today using uh, a power series or a Taylor series expansion. So, essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to assume uh, that we can expand x of t in terms of powers of t. So we're going to say that this is equal to some constant c0 plus some constant c1 times t uh, plus c2 t squared uh, plus c3 t cubed. And I think I'm going to go up to c for t to the fourth plus dot, dot, dot. And we're going to assume that this expansion goes on forever, that this is you know, some, some, essentially some polynomial Taylor series expansion of the solution x of t. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this expansion, we're going to take its derivative x dot, and we're also going to multiply it with a, and we're going to set those two expressions equal to each other and solve for what all these coefficients have to equal to satisfy this differential equation. Okay, so I'm just going to write this out. We also have that, um, uh, how do I want to write this? I want to say like x dot, which of course we know is just d dt of x, the derivative of this with respect to time. So x dot, uh, if I take x dot, then my c naught is going to go to zero and get canceled. And so I'm going to get just a c1 plus 2 c2 times t, again, if I take the derivative of, of a constant t squared, it's 2 times that constant times t, 2 times that constant times t, plus 3c3t three three squared, plus 4c4t cubed, plus um, dot, dot, dot. Good, that's all I'm going to need for now. Uh, and then the last thing I'm going to do, so now I have my x dot, I have my x, and now I'm just going to multiply x by ax, uh, by, by a, and I'm going to write down, you know, ax of t equals, it's this first expression times a, so it's ac naught plus ac1t plus ac2t squared plus ac3 t cubed plus a c4 t4 plus dot dot dot. And again, each of these goes on forever. This is a, an infinite expansion uh, in polynomials. Um, if you're watching this online, which you obviously are, um, there is a whole lecture on what is a Taylor series, what is this infinite polynomial expansion of my function uh, x of t, you know, how do we plot this in MATLAB and Python and really understand why is it that I can approximate these functions using infinite uh, series or polynomials in the independent variable. So you can click on that if you're um, you know, confused or, or need a re refresher. But now what we're going to do is we're literally going to take 
this expression for, um, for x dot and this expression for ax, and we're just going to set them equal to each other because we know that our differential equation is essentially a rule saying x dot has to equal a times x at every instant in time. For every t, x dot has to equal a times x. And what it means for this to be true at every instance in time is that it means that every single term in this expansion has to equal each other. So the, the t to the 0 term, these have to equal each other. The t to the 1's term, these have to equal each other. So essentially, locally, point-wise, these have to equal each other, these have to equal each other, these have to equal each other, and so on and so forth. And you can kind of convince yourself that the only way for this to be true at every instant in time is for these to equal each other for every power of t. This is actually a really good exercise to get comfortable uh, with these series is think about, you know, if this is true for t equals 0 and 1 and 2 and 3 and all time, you know, 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3 1 for all time, the only way that can be true for all time is that if every single term in these expansions of x dot and ax equal each other. And so that's kind of cool. So essentially what that allows us to do is essentially uh, solve x dot equals ax. We're going to match uh, each power of t in each of these expressions. And so essentially what that's going to look like is the, uh, maybe I'll make sure I have some place to stand. So what that's going to look like is the t to the 0 power, or the, the ones place here, essentially says, you know, this is equal to 1. That essentially says that a times c naught has to equal c1. So uh, c1 equals a times, well, a times c naught. Um, one little caveat here, one little thing. I know that x at time 0, if I plug in time 0 for all of these times, x at time 0 has to equal c naught. Uh, c naught. Because basically at time 0, all of these terms go to 0 except for c naught. So c naught has to be my initial condition x, x naught. Okay, so this means um, that this equals a times x naught. Good. So, so, so we know that c naught equals x naught. We know that c1 equals a times c1 equals a times c naught, so that equals a times x naught. Now we're going to match the t to the first power. Okay, so t to the one's power says 2c2 has to equal a times c1. And this is pretty easy to solve for c2. Again, we're, we're just solving for c1, c2, c3, c4, and then we're going to plug those back in and see what expression we get. So this implies that uh, c2 equals a over 2c1 which equals a squared over 2x naught. See what I did there? So this is essentially what's known as a recursion or recursive relationship, is that every um, c2 was a function of c1, but c1 was a function of c0, which was in turn a function of x naught. So all of these are kind of recursively building on the last power to figure out what c2 equals in terms of c1 and what c3 equals in terms of c2. So I'll just do a couple more of these. Uh, so the t2's power, again, these have to equal each other. That says 3 times c2 equals a times c2. I'm running out of space here. That implies that C2, uh, sorry, you should catch me be yelling into your screen when I mess up. Uh, this was a C3, 3 times C3. And so C3, PO, C3 equals A over 3 C2. And C2 is this, so this equals a cubed over 3 times 2, I'm going to call that 3 factorial, times x naught. 
And I'm just going to do one more of these so you really see the pattern, why I wrote a factorial instead of just 3 times 2. I'm going to do the, the t3 power. The t3 power uh, matching those says that 4c4 4 equals a c3. That implies that c4 equals a fourths c3, which is a to the fourth divided by 4 times 3 factorial, which is 4 factorial times x naught. And so I can write this down in general, dot, dot, dot. Um, I'm just going to write like, you know, t to the nth power, the, uh, the nth power of t is going to be uh, n plus 1 cn plus 1 equals a times cn. And recursively, that's going to imply that cn plus 1 equals a over n plus 1 cn, which is going to equal a to the power n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial times x naught. So kind of every single term in this Taylor series expansion of x dot and ax have to equal each other for this to be true at all time. And so that gives me equations for c1 as a function of c naught, right? c1 has to equal a times c naught. c2, 2 times c2 has to equal a times c1. 3 times c3 has to equal a times c2, and so on and so forth. And because I know that c0 is my initial condition, because if I plug in t0 here, I get x0 equals c0, I can set up this recursion relationship and write down all of these constants as a function of x0. Okay, so I'm just going to actually like circle these, this one, this one, this one. So all of these expressions for um, all of these constants are written in terms just of a and x naught. And now I can collect all of those terms and replace all of these constants here for x of t. So that's my last step, and then we're done. Okay, maybe I'll use orange, because I think orange looks really cool. So now what we have is x of t equals, uh, everything has an x naught, so I'm actually going to pull that x naught out. I'm just going to say x naught times x of t equals, right, all of these constants have a, some combination of a's times x naught. So I'm just going to pull that out. So c naught is a, maybe, maybe I'm not going to pull them out. I think this will be too confusing. I'm just going to write the whole thing and then we'll simplify, okay? So um, I'm not going to skip steps in my Taylor series. So x of t is c naught, that's a x naught plus C1t, which is, ah, sorry, I'm dying here. All right, bear with me. I'm going too fast. Uh, I'm going to slow down. X of t is C0 plus C1t plus C2t squared and so on and so forth. C0 is just X0. So this is first off just X0. And then C1 is a times x naught. So that's uh, I'm just going to say x naught a times t. c2 times t squared is this, this guy. So that's plus x naught a squared t squared over 2. a squared t squared over 2. The t cubed term is c3, which again is, this is x naught times a cubed t cubed over 3 factorial, a cubed t cubed over 3 factorial, plus, uh, I'm just going to write down x naught a to the fourth t to the fourth over 4 factorial, plus dot, 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 dot. And I, I'm even going to write this down. It's plus x naught, you know, a to the n t to the n over n factorial, plus dot, 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 forever and ever and ever. And so here, if I pull out my x naught, what I get now is that this is, you know, x naught times 1 plus a t plus a squared t squared over 2 factorial is just 2 plus a cubed 
t cubed over 3 factorial plus, you know, a4 t4 over 4 factorial plus dot 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 forever. This is literally the definition of e to the at. This here, this is actually how we would define e to the a t is by this power series expansion here. So, so what we've done is we've written down our differential equation. We've derived this, you know, in the previous lecture. We assumed that x of t has some power series expansion, and then we have figured out what all of those coefficients had to be to satisfy this equation. We literally computed x dot, the power series, a times x, the power series. We set them equal to each other term by term by term. And we got this expression for what x of t is purely as a function of, of a and t. And it could be that you would just, you know, write down this power series and say, hmm, I see this differential equation all the time. I'm going to give this a name. This is going to be my special function, you know, Steve's function of a t. Um, and, you know, that's kind of what Euler did, right? So Euler gets a lot of credit for writing down this exponential function. This, you know, this is Euler's number e, which is the solution of this most common differential equation. So you can solve these differential equations using power series, and this technique is very, very general. You can use this for much more complicated ODEs that are nonlinear, really hairy systems. Uh, this is how you would derive Bessel's functions. This is how you would derive Aries functions. Lots of, of things you can solve when you know that you can write down a power series and plug it into your differential equation. Okay, And in fact, this is what the exponential function is. This is the power series expansion for e to the at. Okay, so that's, that's kind of a neat connection. Okay, again, if you want a little recap or refresher on, you know, how you can approximate functions with these infinite series of polynomials, uh, check out the, the video on, you know, Taylor series and power series. All right, thank you.